Getting sales on Etsy comes down to two main things. The first is getting as many people as possible to see your listing and click on it. And the second is to actually have a relatively high conversion ratio so that everyone who clicks on your listing does actually buy the product. If you can achieve these two things, your product will blow up on Etsy. Why? Well, that's because Etsy wants to make money too. And the way that Etsy makes their money is by getting more sales on their platform. So every product that is having better traction and getting more sales will be pushed higher on the Etsy platform so that it gets even more sales. This might be extremely obvious to you, but in this video, I want to talk about all the small things that play into getting your products in front of your potential customers and what will make them more willing to click and buy your products. From what I said earlier that Etsy actually pushes the products that are doing well more than the ones that aren't, it might sound like your products are never going to get the light of day. And although this might be true in some cases, Etsy actually does give a halo period to every single new product that's posted on Etsy. With more traction during this halo period, it's more likely that Etsy is going to push your products further to more potential customers and you'll continue getting more success. But the catch here is that someone has to actually use the correct search terms in order to find your product. This is where having SEO or search engine optimized key terms is extremely important. Most sellers on the Etsy platform fall into the mistake of thinking as a seller and not as a buyer. This means that the titles and the tags and the description that they create are just to fill in all that information that they think they need to about the product and not actually the search terms that a buyer would use to naturally find their products. The best way to optimize all your key terms is to actually think about what you would personally put into the Etsy search box to find your product. The tricky thing here is that you also want to make sure that you're only adding relevant tags and keywords to your product because if you start adding terms that aren't at all related to your product, it'll probably get pushed into that category where no one's going to click on it because that's not at all relevant to what they search. If we hop over to Everbee, I can show you my personal favorite way of validating key terms and search terms that actually do get searches as well as the competition that they get throughout Etsy as a marketplace. As you can see on the left side here, I am using Everbee, which actually really comes in handy when you use this search bar on Etsy. So if I looked up mom hoodies, what will come up up is this little B symbol right here and it'll tell me exactly how many monthly searches each one of these search terms has gotten in the past month. So as you can see, Mom Hoodie has the most at 3,393 and we can actually click on see more to get more information about this. Everybody has now pulled up this keyword research tool right here, which will show us exactly how much in terms of volume and competition there is on the Etsy platform for these given keywords. It'll also associate a keyword score compared to all these words right here. So as you can see, a hoodie right here has absolutely no competition, but a lot of search volume, and that's because it is misspelt hoodie with an I instead of an IE. This could be an amazing strategy on how you personally get more search terms and recognition on your product if you actually put this in the tags or in the title somewhere. As you can see, the competition is pretty steep. Mom hoodie right here is only at 160,000, but if we scroll down a little bit more right here, hoodie, the general term is 1.7 million in terms of competition. And as we keep going down, we can see that there are other terms as well. Looks like the misspelled ones are the ones that actually have the best keyword score, which is a little bit worrying. But if you can capitalize on using these keywords, then I guess you're just playing the game and making more sales. Back over here on Etsy, the next thing that we can do to validate good keywords and search terms is by actually using Everbee to see which of these products from these mom hoodie products is actually selling the best. And then once we find the top selling products, we can compare the keywords and the tags that they're using to see exactly why they're doing so well. And we can put those into our products as well. Right here, what you can see is that I've organized it by estimated monthly revenue and these top products are absolutely making a killing. So what we can do right here is actually look at some of these top products like these two right here. These are all kind of the same, all three of these. Let's go into this one as well. And what we can do once we're on these products, we can actually look at the titles that they're using and we can use Everbee to look at the tags. Right here, what you can see is that Everbee gives us the rundown of all the tags as well as the competition and the volume on Etsy. So right here, what we can see is that mom gift has a lot of volume, but also a lot of competition. 
And as we start going down right here, mom sweatshirt, a lot less competition, but also not as much search volume. Custom embroidered could be a lot better because it has half or a little bit less than half of the competition as mom sweatshirt and not even a little bit more than half in terms of the volume, the search volume. So this way you can actually find and pick the best key terms to put as your tags. And the other thing that you can do is just compare what is written in these titles. So now we're on the second product right here. And what we can do is see how many of these keywords actually overlap. Right here, custom embroidered is an overlap. So we know that one is helping and doing really well. And we can just keep going down the list from the top products to figure out what the best titles, tags, and keywords are to put into our products. If you wanna use Everbee, you can try it for absolutely free with the link in my description. It helps a lot when you're trying to do this kind of research and figure out what the best tags, titles, or just looking at the best products and figuring out inspiration for designs. So I would highly recommend you guys check it out, like I said, in the description, but let's carry on. Now that you're able to get your products in front of your potential customers, the next important step is having them click on your product listings. This is where two big factors come into play, and it is the thumbnail image that you use for your product, and the second one is the pricing that you have for your product. The reason that these are the two biggest things when it comes to having a potential customer click on your product is because those are the only two pieces of information along with your title that that a customer will be able to see. And since we've already dealt with the title, we need to make sure that that main thumbnail image draws the customer in, intrigues them, and the price is amazing and makes the customers wanna buy it right away. The trick for selecting the mock-up for your thumbnail image is to make sure that it sticks out and actually draws eyes to it. For example, when you're scrolling through Etsy, figure out what products are actually catching your eye. Is it because of the mock-up colors? Is it because of the background in that mock-up? Is it because of the design itself? What is it about that thumbnail image that catches your eye over all the other hundreds and thousands of products on Etsy? Every time that you do this, write down one of those things or a couple things that you notice, and that's what you're gonna use when you're making your thumbnail image. Some thumbnails actually contain text on them, which can be drawing in those eyes, something like next day shipping or free shipping, something like that. And other mock-ups just have really good product colors or the design itself is really unique, but you have to remember that it has to stand out and it can't just be one of the crowd. Another thing that you have to remember is that a lot of people who are shopping on Etsy might be shopping from their mobile phone, which means that all those thumbnail images are significantly smaller. This means that you have to make sure that the mock-up that you're using is a big enough image of your product that your customer can see the product clearly as well as the design on the product clearly. The next thing that the customers will look at is the price, and that's gonna determine if it's too much to even click on that product listing or if they're willing to continue. This is where you're gonna use something called the loss leader. It's where you go into your your product listing and you actually modify the price of one of your variations to be lower than the rest of those products. For example, if you're selling shirts, you might have the extra small white shirt be a few dollars less than the rest of your products because Etsy will always show the lowest price on your listings. This means that if you have that price a few dollars lower, that's exactly what the customer will see along with that main thumbnail image, which will entice them to click through into your product. Now that you've been able to get your product in front of a customer and that potential customer has clicked on your product, you need to make sure that they actually go ahead and buy your product, which is just a few more steps. The first and most important step for this is remembering that the more friction you have in the buying process, the less likely any of those potential customers will continue buying from you. This means that if for some reason they don't understand how the sizing chart works or all the customization options because it's not detailed anywhere, anything along the line that makes it harder for your customer to buy your product means that less of them are actually going to continue and go through the whole purchasing process and they're more than likely to just click off and go find a different product. A good way to test this is pretending that you're a customer who doesn't understand anything about Etsy and seeing how easy it is to buy your product. One of the best things that will help with this process is to actually have images on your Etsy listing that are the buying process. So for example, the first image is of course going to be your main mock-up thumbnail. But after that, if you're selling shirts, maybe consider the second image being your sizing chart and the third image being a color guide showing what colors and options you have. The fourth image could be something about your customization if that's what you're offering on your product. For example, if you have a custom year or a custom name on your shirt design, maybe explain where the customer is supposed to put this and how it actually works. With the buying process clearly labeled on your images, it's more of a slideshow and a lot easier for your customers to figure out what they're doing and how to buy it. Another little trick that 
that helps encourage buyers to purchase it right there and then is to have a daily sale running on your store. Something like 40 or 50% off is the most common on Etsy. You'll probably see this all across Etsy. And the reason that they do this or the reason that most stores do this is because there is a timer that comes along with these daily sales saying that there's only X amount of hours until this sale is over, which pushes customers to buy it a little bit more hastily because that price could go up. The next thing is to make sure that you have everything written in the description, talking about the buying process, talking about shipping, talking about what they can expect for shipping times, talking about your returns or exchanges if you do offer those, anything about your care instructions for the product, things like that. Everything should be written in that description. Typically you can copy and paste this if you're selling the same products or at least parts of it if you are selling multiple different products. And the final tip that will help you get more sales is to offer all the different variations for your product so that more customers can get exactly what they're looking for and they don't have to click off to find a different listing. For example, if you're selling shirts, maybe consider offering hoodies and crewnecks in that same exact listing. This way, if somebody finds a design that they like as that shirt, but they wanted it as a hoodie, they don't have to go back and keep, keep scrolling trying to find one, which probably won't even be from you. They can just go ahead and select that option right on that listing. And this is true the other way as well. If you have a hoodie or a crewneck listing, include the other two on that same listing because now you're just expanding the potential for selling that product. At the end of the day, the way that the Etsy algorithm works is by pushing the products that do well because that's going to earn them the most money. This means that the products that get more interactions and more sales will be pushed to the top for the search terms that they have in their title and their tags. You might have to do a few other things as well just to keep up with it, such as trying different products and different designs and different variations. But at the end of the day, it is just experimenting until it does work out for you. If you do have any questions at all, let me know down in the comments. And if you are looking to try out Everbee for free, be sure to use the link in my description. But as always, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And I will see you all in the next one.